Uh oh, they making him pull over and checking him. fans and RV enthusiasts we just got back from our very long trip to Canada Prince Edward Island Nova Scotia New Brunswick arriving at 7485 Horton Highway on the left we spent several one-nighters on the way up to our first point of interest which was Gettysburg We spent six nights in Gettysburg, which included the trip to Harrisburg and Lancaster as well. Then we went to the New York City KOA North for a specific trip. They have a bus trip that takes you to New York City. We did a video on that. If you'd like to see that, that's one, one of our previous videos. We left New York City, we went to Plymouth, Massachusetts to see the monuments, eat some seafood and do a whale watching tour. We stopped at the KOA in Saco, Old Orchard, Maine, specifically to see Kimmy Buck Fort and Old Take the next left onto Maine 178 West. We stopped at a Cold River campground in Eddington, in Maine. Mile, Spent two nights there just the right. to catch our breath a little bit before going into Canada. Your destination is on the right. This campground was nice, but man, the mosquitoes were everywhere and they only had one 50 amp hookup, period. We finally arrived in New Brunswick and we rested the first night. Then we went to Prince Edward Island the next day and saw as many sights as we could see in a one day drive on Prince Edward Island. Uh, it was beautiful, but we also wanted to see New Brunswick and Lunenburg and Peggy's Cove. We are at Victoria's Lighthouse. So here's the little restaurant out on the pier, lobster barn, ice cream bar, we have a boat launch. There's the actual lighthouse across the little inlet water there. It's a pier you can walk out on, do a little fishing. Very picturesque. Needs to, yeah, it needs to be up. All right, hang on just a second. Everybody say cheese. Cheese. Here's the view back from the eatery restaurant looking off of their deck the back of their building and the ladies have come back here beautiful beautiful view look at the greenery green fields this island is full of farmland and tractors and they have the greenest green is either grass or hay or something that they've planted I don't think I've ever seen any greener green in my life 
Look at the diamonds on the ocean water. This is Anne of Green Gables home. We went here, it's a very pretty little area. They've got the barns and the little sheds, the buggy there. They had a cute little garden there where they planted vegetables and they have beautiful flower gardens all around the home. Many little girls have grown up reading these books and enjoying this lifestyle and learning about history. Some of the flowers, we weren't sure what they were, so we will have to look those up later and find out what they were. Inside the house was very pretty. I've got it still decorated in period uh, furniture, the wallpaper, the antique furniture that they had in that period. This is Anna Green Gables' bedroom here. Prince Edward Island was a much bigger island than we originally had thought. We went to Charlottesville first and spent some time there and then we headed off to the northern part of the island where the Green Gables home is. It took us quite a while to get there and we had a little problem finding it but we eventually did and got to go in and really enjoyed looking at all the history and remembering reading these books when we were young. This day of touring was about 224 miles round trip. It was well worth the scenic view and well worth the time. The PEI bridge was, I believe, $47 Canadian to get back. We left our campground in Shediac, New Brunswick this morning, early, early. Took us four hours to get to Dartmouth. We're staying at a Double Tree Inn by Hilton. You can see in the distance there, there is the toll booth to go across the bridge. Once you get over the bridge, you're in Halifax. We're fixing to go to Halifax in just a little bit. Check out the Maritime Museum, the Fairview Cemetery, and there's several other things that we're going to check out while we're over there. We're going to spend the night here tonight and get up and go to Pettigee's Cove and Lunenburg possibly tomorrow. Downtown Halifax. Right next to the ocean. Right in front of a car. Parking garage. Maritime Museum is down below. Typical big town. Not a huge town, but a big town. Lots of high-rise buildings, lots of one-way streets, lots of no parking between here and here. Lots of costly parking garage. Two dollars for 30 minutes. Three dollars and a quarter for every 30 minutes thereafter. On Sunday, April 14th at 11.40 p.m., the Titanic struck a giant iceberg, and by 2.20 a.m. on April 15th, the unsinkable ship was gone. The first vessel to arrive on the scene of the disaster was the Cunard liner RMS Carpathia, and she was able to rescue more than 700 survivors. On Wednesday, April 17th, the day that day before the Carpathia arrived in New York, the White Star Line dispatched the first of four Canadian vessels to look for bodies in the area of the sinking. The unknown child's shoes were one of the most difficult objects to view. They were the personal effects of an unknown child and a mortuary bag which was used to identify and safeguard the personal effects of the Titanic victims. 
The leather shoes is believed to be from body number four or the unknown child. This very young boy recovered by the crew of McKay Bennett was buried at Fairview Lone Cemetery in Halifax. In 2007, as a result of extensive DNA testing, the child's shoes were identified as those of 19-month-old Sidney Leslie Goodwin from England. The research was peer-reviewed and confirmed on April of 2011. Mr. Goodwin was en route to Niagara Falls for a job offer. The entire family, including Sydney, were lost. The official total of all passengers was 2,229. 2, 706 of those were survivors, 492 passengers and 214 crew members. Those lucky enough to su survive the sinking and the freezing water were eventually picked up by the Carpathia. Controversially, the SS Californian was closer to the Titanic when she went down, but failed to respond to her distress calls. Just getting to Peggy's Cove Township. About to go to the lighthouse. And the drive getting here was pretty awesome. You got a few mountains and then you come back down and there's all these beautiful little inlet waters, little lakes, beautiful houses. Amazing. All right, somebody tell me why the sign reads in mirror image when I'm doing a selfie. I don't like that. I don't know how to fix it. see the lighthouse just barely right there We are in Peggy's Cove, Nova Scotia, beautiful little small fishing town. They have no gas stations in this area and it's about 25 kilometers back to the main road where the next gas station is. Beautiful little quaint village or town, whatever you want to call it.
see me. All right, we're gonna try this for the third time. I'm gonna try to do a sweeping video from across the water of Lunenburg town. The wind is blowing fiercely across the water as you would expect. But the town is breathtaking beautiful. Unbelievable little small family community fishing village, fishing town. There is a golf course and a couple of hotels you would expect. paint their boats they paint them rock color so they can see them on the water and the leftover paint they had for the boats was used on the buildings so the buildings were secondary the boats are their primary means of income and there's a wide angle view from where I'm standing beautiful absolutely We're leaving Ocean Surf RV Park in Shediac, New Brunswick. We've had a turn left on Highway 133. We've had a nice week. We had a couple of days that were rainy, stormy, yucky, but we still had a lot of days that we got to get out and see beautiful scenery beautiful beaches and lighthouses so all in all this has been a great week all right out the gate we go it's a beautiful day hopefully we'll have a beautiful drive thank you very much y'all have a nice summer beautiful up here here we go Turn left on Belleville Beach Road. 